the private dependency case initiated by maternal grandmother Penny Powell back in August of last year resulted in a consent temporary custody award with a case plan being adopted by the court for the mother and putative fathers to do certain things. Um, and we're here to review that progress and the status of the placement. And we're conducting this hearing virtually over the internet using Zoom. In addition to myself, there is uh, the mother, Brooke Norris, um, Tyler Norris, the biological father of Naomi, Brandon Hendricks, the biological father of Nathan. Ms. Blackman from Henry D. Fax. Ms. Miller is the appointed attorney and guardian ad litem for the minor children. I have an Alexis Love. I'm hearing Henry D. Fax, case manager. Okay. Don't think I've met you before. If I did, I don't, I forgot it. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm not good with names. And there's Mr. Skavronik, the attorney for DFAX. All right. I had a, a report from the guardian ad litem indicating that all three of the parents are still working on their case plan. Is that true? Uh, yes, sir. All right. So does, by process of deduction, does that mean for the time being we can leave things temporarily like they were when I last saw you with Ms. Powell? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I heard two yeses and I got three. I wonder you, one of the dads didn't say anything that I heard. Um, I've completed everything that the guardian litem have asked me to do. Do you have the written case plan in front of you? Um, I have it um, through email. Okay. All right. And you filed to legitimate the child? Yes, sir, I did. Where did you file it? Um, I would say January 28th, I believe. Where did you file it? Henry County. Which court? Um, I came to the Henry County Courthouse and um, filled out the legitimation paperwork and was contacted by uh, Allison Crane, who is representing me. Okay. Your Honor, uh -huh. I have not filed a petition for legitimation. I have requested the DNA test, which is required for me to file the petition for legitimation. And Mr. Hendricks advised me today that this court ordered the child be produced for DNA testing sometime back. And that was maybe just done in the last week or so. Okay, so we're waiting on it. Okay. So we're waiting on that. Okay, so you're in progress. We are, Your Honor. Okay, so you've done all that you can do, but... One of the things that you have to do is to have completed the legitimation process, and it's sort of out of your hands now when you get that test result, which hopefully shows you're biologically 99.9% .9 sure to be the father, then your lawyer can file your petition and then we can have a hearing <coughs> to see if you can be the legitimate father, which is a prerequisite to custody and visitation issues for a putative father in Georgia. Okay, I think we talked about that at the last hearing, didn't we? Yes, sir, yes, we did. Okay. All right, so um, I see where you're saying you've done all, you've done everything, but having that legitimation it will make a big difference. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. All right. So um, we're going to leave temporary custody with Grandma. Are all the parents visiting regularly with the kids? Mom with both yes, kids and dads with your respective kid? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will yes, On these sir. visits, do you come to grandma's house or did the child come and spend the weekend or the day with you at your house? How do those work? I come to Miss Powell's house. Okay. Do you have good quality visits there? Um, 
Yes, sir. Every visit has been a good visit. Okay. Have you made all the visits that were scheduled? Um, there is no actual schedule, scheduled visits. It's just kind of when she has time and when I have time. Okay. So you're both pretty busy. Um, I know she works and then between, um, the two children I have custody of and the doctor's visits, but, um, mm -hmm. well, do you see Nathan at least once a week? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say once a week at least, but um, every other week. I try to make it by every other week after church service. Okay. If not every week, at, at least once every every three weeks. I mean, there is sometimes gaps. Um, you know, my kids they just got over being sick, and we didn't want to bring that over there to their house. Sure. So how old you, how old is your child? Um, I have a three year old and a four year old. Also. Okay, and then Nathan's eight. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, does he know the two younger children, sep half siblings? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there any reason he can't come over and spend the day at your house after church? You go by, pick him up, and take him to your house, and then bring him back around dinner time. There's no reason at all. You have any problem with that, Miss Powell? Sir, I am so sorry. I'm trying to hang this phone up. Yes. What was your question? If I have a problem with Nathan going to Brandon's and spending like Sunday afternoon after church and spending several hours or some other day, whatever it works out. He says y'all both work and you have pretty busy schedules. Uh, Nathan prefers it that Brandon and his girls come here. He feels more comfortable. He knows Brandon's his daddy. He loves his sisters, but he doesn't really know them. Uh, that well, and he is a homeboy. He likes to be with grandma. Well, so I, want him to go see his, I want him to go see his daddy. So I'm at daddy's house. So um, if he would, I will try to talk him into going. We have tried that. Yes, sir. Uh, he waits until bedtime and he wants to come home and I can't drive at night. No, Brandon not, has, I don't want but, I'm not, we need to get it gradual. We don't want to start overnight right yet, but I would like him to go over and get accustomed to dad's house during the day where nobody's having to drive after dark. And, okay. And daddy, Mr. Hendricks, I think can bring the child mm -hmm. back to you. Just try it and see how it works. I think you'll find, um, I mean, the whole idea is for these kids to be reunited with their parents so grandma can be grandma and not have to raise them yeah. the rest of their lives. So they need to get accustomed to all the parents in their respective homes, unless there's some something there that could put them at risk of harm. So, um, right. I understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's try to do that. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't like to make kids do things that they say they don't want to do, but a lot of times kids don't want to do something. They really don't know until they try it that it's not that big a deal and it won't be that bad. Um, how about yes, um, Mr. Norris? How about um, you said she's on her way back to your house. Are you at um, Ms. Powell's house or is she at your house? I'm at Miss Powell's house. Okay. Now, where do, when do you see your daughter? Um, several times a, a week, really, if I can, every day. You come, you come by Miss Powell's house, or does your child yes, go sir. to your house? Well, okay. So, where I'm living at my grandmother's, um, she has the kids on Thursdays because because Penny's working. Okay. You know, and so she gets them off the bus on Thursdays. That's their that's her scheduled day to help babysit. Uh huh. Um, so they do come over then. Okay. So uh, once a week they do go over to to my residence. Okay. Pretty much. All right. So you're okay with that? Time, yes, sir. You're okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. How about you? I I hear Miss Powell is okay with it, Mister Norris. Are you okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Miss Norris, Brooke Norris, what? How, what kind of contact are you having with the kids? Um, I'm currently in treatment right now out of state. Oh, okay. Well, then, <coughs> so you're doing virtual visits. Yes, sir. Um, but before this, it was also several times a week. Um, 
at my mom's under her supervision um, almost every day. I got to see them. Um, and I've been here for a week today. So oh, you're just getting there. And how long are you scheduled to be there? Is it a six month plan? Um, my insurance will cover up to four months. I know definite I'll be here at least till March, but it will cover up to four months. So we will see God willing. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think when we can come back and see how things are. I don't want to, I'd rather not come back and you're still out of state. Mm -hmm. Um, understanding that those sometimes are flexible, yes. um, especially when you got insurance involved. Yeah. We're in February, so April would only be 60 days. I usually come back every four to six months uh, um, when people are actively working their case plans. So I'm, a lot, unfortunately, a lot of these cases, parents don't are kind of in the wind and they're not working a case plan, so we don't come back that often sometimes. Right. But we can, how about six months would be... Um, August, it would be right before school starts. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, actually, August, let's say the end of July, because school in Henry County does start like the first week of August. Gentlemen, does that work for y'all to come back in July and see how the expanded visits have gone and um, see how these are, kids are doing? Yes, sir. That's perfect for me. Mr. Hendricks? Yes, sir. That's fine. I'll get you time. Now, we may have to have a hearing about your legitimation petition between now and then. I, I don't, if it, if you get everything in, there's no need for us. To, we can wait till July, but I don't want you to feel like you have to wait until then. Uh, since that's, you're telling me that's the only thing you have left to do. I'll leave that up to you and your lawyer to let me know when she files the paperwork, when she wants it set, if she wants it set with the review hearing, I'm getting ready to give you or whether she wants it set earlier. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, Ms. Crane, if you'll remind me, I said that. <laughs> I will, Your Honor. All right. Anything else that we need to address? I'm glad everybody's getting along. Some of these cases, like similar to y'all's, or every case is, no two cases are exactly alike, but when I have people not getting along, it makes things, um, things you get up, believe it or not, it makes things a lot more stressful on the kids because they sense the the fact that the adults are not getting along all that well. Your Honor, a couple of things from the department. Okay. Uh, first of all, Mr. Norris um, uh, is uh, underwent a substance abuse assessment, and uh, as part of his recommendations from his substance abuse assessment, uh, he was recommended to enroll in an inpatient substance abuse treatment program. To the department's knowledge, he is not enrolled in that. Um, so uh, where the court was asking about whether or not the uh, parents were complying with their case plans, um, the department wanted to make the court aware of that. Um, secondly, yes. the, um, the grandmother, <laughs> Ms. Ms. Powell, Your Honor, um, has been asked on numerous occasions by the department to submit to drug screens um, in fact, in the month of January, there were seven missed and or refused drug screens by Ms. Powell. Um, and there were several missed screens since that time. She had a positive drug screen back in September of last year. Therefore, the department would ask that as part of any order that might be prepared from this hearing, that Ms. Powell, excuse me, be made to submit and undergo any random drug screens as may be requested by the department. Yes. Well, my initial order already required all of these parties to submit to drug screens. Um, what was what did she test positive for back last year? She did, Your Honor, on September twenty third. Uh, excuse me, September she tested positive for cocaine, opiates, benzos, norhydrocodone, codeine, and hydrocodone. Well. Your Honor, I'm listening. Uh, I have never, not once, refused a drug screen. When I tested positive, they explained to me when everyone around me, family, neighbors, stated I was not a drug user. I had Brooke in my home. 
I was flushing drugs. I was handling drugs. I was fighting with Brooke. Since then, I tested clean with hair, <laughs> urine, and I have never refused one time of anybody. And if they want to come to my home, they are welcome to come to my home. If they want me to tinkle in a cup, I will tinkle in a cup. But I'm tired of being accused of not cooperating. I've done everything that defects or my counselor has told me to do. And I am rocking these children as I have since the day they were born. So I don't know who this drug lady is that says I have refused. I haven't spoke to a drug lady but one time, and I was at work, and she said I needed a random drug screen. And I said, ma'am, I am holding down a job. And I, no one told me that I was to have random drug screens. I'm not, you know, I'm not, not complying, but can we set this up? I never heard from the lady since. I don't know what they are talking about. And I explained this to Miss Love, who knows me very well, and my counselor, Miss Joy, who also knows me very well. Okay, I'm not familiar. Who are those people? The caseworker and our counselor. Oh, Miss Love. Okay. The, the lady. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, so at the outset of the case is when you tested positive for all those drugs, which you say yes. got in your system because you were flushing your daughter's drugs. And I was told by the workers that can happen because I said, there is no way. There is no way. And they told me, are you handling? Are you touching her stuff? Are you trashing her stuff? Yes, I was. Didn't think anything about it. Well, and I have done this was, for 37 years. And this is the first time I've ever heard of anybody getting it in their system by flushing drugs. I so, had never heard of it myself. Yeah. Well, if that's how it happened and you haven't been flushing any more drugs, you shouldn't have any no. passing no. hair follicle or urine tests upon demand. The reason we require when people have tested positive, we require subsequent random tests is it doesn't take a lot to figure out if a person is a user. Right. How they can defeat the testing system by manipulating when they give a sample. That's why they don't want you to know when you're going to be asked to give a sample. I was I never told that. I understand it about being at work <laughs> and not being able to leave right then or something, but um, you know, now, Slep randomly and you submit the tests and uh, I'm counting on them coming out like you just told me, clean. Right. Okay? Yes, sir. All right, so you can include it in the review order, Ms. Miller, that all of the parties are still remain subject to random screens of your or hair. Um, Mr. Norris, what about, are you in the process of looking for a residential uh, drug placement? Abs uh, actually, Your Honor, I was never, I never did do an evaluation, so I'm not sure where they got their recommendation from, but... Um, I have been passing drug uh, drug screens since our last visit with you, um, and the recommendation from Miss Love was just to get an evaluation to lower my ASAM level. Um, but my drug screens have been clean. Is that right, Miss Love? No, that that's not correct, Your Honor. Um, he has been doing well with his drug screens. However, the evaluation he's referring to is an assessment. An assessment is done before they are connected to a counselor. So the assessments were done last year, and it was clear that his ASM levels were high and that the recommendation was inpatient treatment. He just has not done it yet. Yeah, so I, I never did an assessment. About it. Well, she just said you did do an assessment, Mr. Norris. I don't recall doing an assessment. Who did I do an assessment with? Uh, it would have been with Behavioral Heights, one of our contractors. It's one of right, our providers. I never, nobody came out and gave me an assessment, though. So, so I they do an assessment before you all start therapy. That was the assessment. It was done so, at the end of the case. It was over the phone, oh, correct? I never filled out any questions, no questionnaire. I didn't do anything Just like that. You said it was done over the phone. Nobody ever called me. Okay. It was done. All right. Well, I'll take your word for it. 
Uh, Miss Love, would would there be a potential to reevaluate that assessment to have it conducted again to check that ASEM level to see if it is indeed still at the point in which he would need inpatient? Are you asking for yourself or for Tyler? For Tyler, me being in treatment now, we'll visit that when it's time, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we can, but I would also have to speak to my supervisor and see what we yeah. are because everyone is saying that what I did not tell them, but I also made it clear that this is what was expected. We all met in person in last right. December. So everyone was on the same page. So I, I'm hearing a lot of Miss Love did or did not say, but I did make it clear. What well, no, I didn't said. say you didn't say anything other than than recommending okay. that I go and get reevaluated. Um, but what I am saying is I never went through an assessment in the first place. So I don't understand where they got that level from because nobody called me and assessed me for anything. They just, I guess, went off what was going on with the situation. Okay. Well, you and I can talk after the hearing, but I'll give you the exact date it was done. And then I'll share that okay. information with you in the recommendation. All right. Yeah, okay. I need the name of who it was done with, too. Okay. I'll, right. I'll provide you with that. Okay. okay. All right. All the parties need to continue complying with the, the previously imposed case plan, continue to cooperate with DFACS, continue to cooperate with each other in facilitating positive visits with your child, both in person for the two dads and with mom, virtual visits, as long as she's at um, residential rehab. Um, Mom, you need to continue to comply with the rules that you're, and I'm very excited to hear that you've taken that step. I know it's not easy to find a place that's quality. It's not, and it's sometimes it's not easy for people to follow the the, the confines of, a, of an institutionalized program, but you can reap great benefits from it if you devote yourself to it and to successfully completing it. And I wish you the best of luck with doing that. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. I really do. So I look to see all of you back on July 30th at two o'clock. If I need to see you back earlier, uh, Mr. Hendricks, on your legitimation, your lawyer will let me know about that when you get your paperwork filed. Um, we would have to do that by Zoom, which we've done legitimation hearings by Zoom before because that, it could be... You know, we. I don't know if mom's back home, it, it's a moot point, um, but uh, we have done them and we can do a hybrid case where people are here, whether they're all on Zoom. We'll figure all that out when we get ready to do that. OK, yes, so anybody got any problem with appearing on Zoom? I know mom is, is it's a great benefit to her since she's not here locally right now. But uh, otherwise, we'll for the foreseeable future, we'll have all our hearings on Zoom unless somebody objects. Uh, Zoom sounds good to me. Okay. That's fine. Good. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, thank you. Ms. Miller, did you need to talk to the kids? Did you talk to them recently? Yeah. Will you put me in a breakout room with them? I'm just need to check on them real quick. All right. Okay. I have some questions for you. Hello. Hey, Nathan. I'm Ms. Miller. We're going to put you in a breakout room. So we... The judge and the other people can't hear you talking to your lawyer, okay? All right, hold on. Let me, uh, I'm not sure how to do a breakout room here. Let me see. Well, the easiest thing is for either them to take the device in another room or for you and Ms. Oh, Patrick to go. Go into another room. All right, hold on Let's one second. I think we're back on, Judge, and I was able to at least see Naomi. She's got a bit of a stomach bug, but she was she was there laying down in the a bed or something. Yeah, she was in the bed. All right. So you got enough time to visit with your clients? Anything you need to address that we haven't already addressed? Ms. Miller? Okay. Yes, I talked to both the kids. I said Naomi was there, too. She was just laying down in the bed. She's got a bit, bit of a stomach bug. Okay. Anything you want to address after talking to them that we haven't already covered in the hearing? No, sir. They appear to be doing good. There's no complaints. Um, they didn't report anything, um, any concerns. Okay. Well, I will see y'all in, uh, what did I tell you? I'm just I'm fixing some paperwork. I messed up on the case before y'all. So July 30th at two o'clock on Zoom. 
That's right. Your Honor, I'm assuming from what the soccer. You win the soccer. Go ahead. I'm assuming from what the court, and I'm sort sort of reading between the lines that the court is asking that the department remain involved. Yes, if you don't, if you don't mind, I would appreciate it. I appreciate what y'all are doing to help this family get all this behind them and get moving on. Is like I said earlier, so grandma can be grandma. Okay. And you asking me to prepare the order, Judge? Yes, ma'am. If you would be so kind. Sure. Mr. Skavranek can be of assistance to you. I don't know how much assistance that would be, but yeah. <laughs> she doesn't want my help. All right, y'all pray every night for warmer weather. We've had all the cold and all the wet that we need for this winter, right? We're yes, ready sir. for spring. All right, y'all take care. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Thanks. well, let me hold on just a second. Let me make sure before I let you go that everybody is at the same address that you gave me when we were here before. Yes, sir, I am. Okay. Yes, sir. Ms. Norris, how can we correspond with you so <laughs> got at treatment? How do you want us to write you? Or we can email uh, you if you want. But um, Yeah, well, we can do email or I have an address if we need one to be on file. Okay. What's that? Huh? Yes, sir. Okay. And Ms. Uh, Powell, you're at Scarborough? Yes, sir. Okay. We got everybody covered. All right. Hang up before I say something else you need. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.